Hey folks, I'm Rosie and welcome to Hanpan Fundamentals. This week we're talking to Tim Tom again about how to keep your instruments safe. So talking oiling, we're talking cleaning, and we're talking all the different bits and pieces you need to keep your instrument in tip top condition. Once you've finished playing with your handpan, what should you do to it? And just generally cleaning and maintenance. I always recommend giving it a good thorough wipe after you play it. Uh, we have oils, we have natural body oils on our fingers, on our hands, on our palms. Sometimes we're performing, we get really sweaty and that's okay. The instruments can, can, can take that, but just wipe it down. Don't let that sweat. Don't let those finger oils stay on the instrument. Otherwise they will attract um, corrosion. They will attract rust. The reality is you don't have to wipe after each time you play, but if you do wipe after each time you play, you're going to have to perform your maintenance less regularly. It's like the housework. If you do a little bit each day, you don't have to do the housework as much, you know, as often, the, the big clean as often, right? It's the same sort of thing. If you if you wipe it down after each use, it's going to last so much longer before you have to re-oil it and re-clean re it and, and do all that. So what do you use to wipe it down? Just a straight up microfiber cloth. I've got these branded ones, but you can grab anything like any hardware store with, with a, this is more like a kind of like a car chamois, a chamois, chamois. That's the kind of microfiber cloth that, that work really well for, for cleaning the handpan because it will collect all the, um, all the oils and all the dust and, and the grime and stuff. As far as, um, as far as cleaning and oiling, um, look, it really depends on where you live and also depends on your regular maintenance or, or if you're living by the ocean or if you're living in really humid, you know, in a, in a rainforest, in a really humid area, you might have to, to clean it and, and oil it more often. So it really just depends on your environment. Mine, I usually oil from, you know, from one, about every one to two months. Um, and I usually clean. And when I say clean, I mean like a thorough, you know, degrease kind of like, let's totally strip it down and start fresh again every six to 12 months. Um, when I was performing a lot more, I would have done it every six months. Now I'll probably do it every 24 months. I don't know. And so the idea is we're putting the oil on to create a tiny little coating and it's really almost not even a coating. It's basically just filling in the pores of the, of the material, the metal to create a barrier from the corrosion, like from the oxid oxidization, from the oxygen to corrode the, the, the steel. Each time you apply the oil, you're actually putting a new layer on top of a new layer on top of another layer on top of another layer. So in that, A, you're actually trapping in a lot of, uh, a lot of dirt and, and grime and grubbiness and oils and things each layer you put on. But second to that is the more layers you put on, the more, and we're talking like tiny, 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 like really thin. I don't even know how thick, but really thin layers. So this is not massive, but to some ears, like my ears, I can hear it. The more layers you put on, the more weight you're putting onto the skin of the metal, which therefore means that the more it has to push and therefore you're going to, you're going to hear, it's not going to sound as full and as vibrant and is not going to have as much resonance, you know? So the idea of, of cleaning it is as far as I'll strip it all back and basically go down to the bare raw steel or nitrate steel or whatever, but the, the bare steel and then put a fresh layer of, of oil directly over that straight away. So then I've, I've come back down to one layer. Um, and so then, and then go from there building them up. No. Yeah. I was just going to say what products, what I sell the most is Phoenix oil. Um, this is a really good product because it's the easiest to apply. That's the fundamental thing. It's made of all natural ingredients. So I really like that about it. Um, and, uh, it smells really good. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's got antibacterial properties, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, I mean, not that I really usually ever play my hand pan with, with really dirty hands or fingers, but, um, it's nice to know that it's kind of like, you know, looking after the, the surface for myself as well, you know, it's, so it's nice that there's a product, finally a product that that's come out to, um, that's specifically designed for hand pans that that's kind of nice on, nice on the skin. Um, likewise with steel one and 
frog lube. They used to be the, the go-tos and they used to be gun lubricants. They used to be gun like protectors. They, that's, that's what they were made for. They weren't made for hemp pens, but back then that's all we had. So um, yeah, I don't use those products anymore. They're very thick products. This is a very thin. That's another thing about this. It's really thin product, so it doesn't dampen the sustain of the instrument very much. Phoenix oil, really good, really easy to put on. Takes about five minutes to apply to your instrument. Comes off really easily as well. This is another product that's only come on the market relatively recently. It's called Pure Sound Wax. It's made by Josh Rivera um, from Veritas or Rivera Steel Tuning. Um, he initially developed this for Siraz Hampans, um, and it's actually literally is a, a wax, you know, um, and it's a thick, hard wax, kind of like, like a beeswax sort of thing. Um, it's, uh, it's also, um, totally uh, natural ingredients. Um, uh, smells really nice as well. Um, Larry Julio, I don't know if you know Larry. Larry has been from Finland. He's been using it as a, as a mustache wax. Um, so it's, it's, it's multidimensional. It's a, it's a multifaceted <laughs> product. What I really love about the pure sound wax. So this is my, I use this on my personal private instruments. Um, I prefer this. The reason I prefer this is, and it's like what I was saying to you before, for Rosie is that the, the feeling of having the pure sound wax on the instrument is it's a very matte feeling. It's a very matte finish. It feels like the instrument that is bare is raw. When you put Phoenix oil on, even though it's the best of the oils, you still, it still feels a little bit, not slimy. Seal one is slimy, like frog loop slimy, but it's like got a shiny, sheeny finish. Like a, it's almost like gloss paint versus matte paint, right? Um, and so when it's on the on the surface of the instrument, I, I kind of can feel it there with the oil. Whereas this, I can't feel it at all. And and once I really got into kind of dropping into playing, once I got comfortable enough with the instrument, I really started to drop into it and kind of start almost started to meditate with it. That's when I started to really notice, oh man, I can really notice this oily feeling, this oily touch. So that's when I moved on to the pure sound wax and it's just, it's just been the best. It takes 10 times longer to apply than Phoenix oil. So that is probably the one drag. That would probably be the one main reason why I don't offer it by default versus the Phoenix oil. Um, because most people, look, the thing is most people already have a hard time performing the maintenance and, and doing the oiling once a month, once every couple of months. So the last thing you need to do is give, make it harder for them. Right. So unless you are feeling like the Phoenix oil is too oily, stick with the Phoenix oil. And if you feel like trying something else, try the pure sound wax. I don't know. I think it's hard. Like I, I, I do want to do this test one day, but I feel like the pure sound wax might have a slightly less sustained hampering effect than the Phoenix oil, right? So anything you put on the instrument, if you strip your instrument back raw, <clears throat> so there's nothing on it, it's going to sing and resonate more than when you put anything on it. It doesn't matter what you put on there. Everything is a coating. Everything is a layer on the surface of the skin. Just like if you put a sheet over a drum skin, like a drum, like a, a, a lot of people put a sheet over a, 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 a snare drum. No, yeah, floor tom or a snare drum, um, which has a particular effect. It dampens. It's a dampening effect. So anything you put on is going to dampen it. It doesn't matter what you put on. Different products will have a, a less dampening effect. I feel like the Pure Sound Wax has a slightly less dampening effect than, than, the, than the Phoenix oil. I'm not sure. It might just be my head that mm -hmm. wants to say that and justify why I use it, but I don't know. Um, okay. So they're the two main things. Yeah, two main things that... So whatever you choose, whichever product you're choosing, you've got to be oiling once a month, ideally. Cleaning. Talk me through cleaning. What is it? How do you do it? So cleaning, I would do every six to 12 months, give or take. Um, <clears throat> cleaning, basically, you need a couple of different things. You need um, either paper towel or some washable cloths. So these are not microfiber cloths. These are kind of like almost dish cloths kind of thing. Um, 
what you're basically trying to do is you're trying to cut off, cut through the oils or wax that you have on the instrument. So isopropyl alcohol is really good for this. If you really want to get like full on, you could use acetone. Be really careful with acetone because it can also compromise the glue. So you don't want to really get it around the rim where the glue is. So I just usually say stick with um, uh, isopropyl alcohol. Basically, you're just going to spray on the isopropyl and then wipe off the ice and the ice probably will cut the oil and you're going to wipe it off with with the cloth and it will probably leave a lot of streaks because the oil's right in there really deep so using two using a few different cloths like this is the first wipe and then the next cloth to the next wipe so that you're not kind of smudging it that you're kind of getting it all off um you can use paper towel i prefer to be a bit more environment environmentally friendly um so i usually try to recommend um cloths but paper towel will work as well you, you wipe it until the towel is dirty and then you throw it out and you basically you keep using the isopropyl until your paper towel or your cloth is coming up clean it's not coming up dirty anymore so you'll see it once you when you wipe it you'll see wow that's that's how much dirt was on my hand pan that's crazy um and so you just keep doing it until it's coming up clean um and then once it's totally clean then you've basically got a, a bare a bare surface right and that's when you apply your oil or wax straight back on there um yeah and it depends too like if you've got rust you might do something slightly a little bit different and try and use a scourer really gently and scrub off the the raised areas to make the the surface really smooth so you not feel the rust you, you run your hand over it and it's like oh it feels rough there that's when you'll scrub it off really gently and then and just any other rust tips uh if you do spot some rust what might you want to do first thing you want to do i mean it, it depends on what situation you're in if um if you're not in a situation where you can clean it oil it straight away just to stop the rust from getting any worse um what you want to do is you you want to try and get the, as much of the rust off as you possibly can you have to remember oxidization attracts more oxidization so rust and oxidization are the same thing we, it's just one's like a more uh scientific term if you like um so i'll use them interchangeably um but um yeah rust will attract more rust so you really want to try and get as much of that off as possible otherwise it will keep it will come back and come back harder and faster and it's just one of those really annoying things um <clears throat> depends on how deep the rust is and it depends on it also depends on the surface of your uh, it depends on what material your instrument's made of for example nitrided instruments are a lot more delicate in this regard the issue here is when once it starts to rust on that outer layer when you're trying to scrub off the rust sometimes you may end up going through the nitriding and start to reveal the the raw steel underneath now it's kind of like a a pro and con here because you do want to get that rust off otherwise if you leave it on there it's going to keep spreading um, but unfortunately if if getting that rust off means that you have to cut through the nitriding layer then it, it just so it, it just has to be that's just what it has to be if you cut through the nitriding layer it shouldn't affect the sound of the instrument uh, however it will therefore affect the its rust resi resilience in the future that patch will be more susceptible to rust in the future it just means you just need to be a little bit more uh, vigilant about that area and, and be watching that on the rim here you can see it's really shiny mm -hmm. i actually polished that all the way back that's shiny because it's completely raw steel so there it's going to be the most susceptible part of the whole instrument to rust on the rim there it's going to rust way before it's going to rust anywhere else it's just the rim it doesn't really matter at all if it does rust so i kind of started doing this because to me that polished rim acts as a bit of a warning system right oh i can i can see it starting to rust on my rim i therefore know that the rest of the instrument's not far behind, I need to up my game. I need to mm -hmm. start doing my maintenance a bit better, right? Rust on the rim, totally no problem because it's already polished down to the bare, bare raw steel. I'll just sand it down again and you can just take that rust off, no problem, back to square one. Absolutely no issue, right? Sure. Because there's no nitriding there. But if it starts to rust here, if I try to do the same thing, 
away goes my night trading, I'm, I'm in trouble. Rust can definitely be sorted out. It's not the end of the world. It's usually just an aesthetic thing or a resale value thing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again, Rosie. It's been really cool to chat with you. Yeah, it's been great. And I'll put links to all of that in the description box. Bye. Awesome. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> I have not quite got the slick YouTuber like doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If it was useful, please give it a like and subscribe for a new tutorial video every week. Mm -hmm.